So this week we're going to do our first of a couple, I think, programming lessons for everybody that's interested. Uh, that's going to be headed by Neil, our programming secretary. So I think I'll talk to Neil and then we'll do some more talking at the end. So, of course we have a small programming stuff team. Um, you might, I saw some of you coming in here just very curiously at this conference from XKCD, essentially saying our practice is pretty much just pushing a few buttons and trying to make a pattern of lights work. Having said that, we do have a few experts on the team. So Priscilla's in the back. Uh, Priscilla, do you want to introduce yourself? So Priscilla's our programming mentor. She helps us with pretty much every aspect of code that we have on the team. And she's a software engineer. Marcus is over there. Thanks, Alex. He's our hardware secretary and is also working with the programming team. And I'm Neil, I'm the lead programmer slash programming secretary. Google tells us that programming is the action or process of writing computer programs, or <laughs> the that was process of scheduling something, especially radio television programs. That second definition is wrong, we're just going to focus on the first one. So, this is not programming. This is stupid. This is just, the point is, not that there's a dog behind a computer, but that programming is not really this difficult, a bunch of abstract concepts strung together. We're going to try to teach you the basics today and get familiar with what programming is really about. So what is programming? When we program, we're creating instructions for a computer. And it's not in natural language. I can't just tell the computer, sort 100 integers from 1 to 100. Right? I can't just do that. I can't just do an expansion and say, like, computer, por favor, los numeros. Right? It's not going to work out. So I have to use a programming language. And there are several thousands of these, including Java, C, C, Python, and so on, PHP, JavaScript, Ruby, Haskell, basically whatever you want. That's great. Perfect. To show you the difference between programming language and natural language, we're going to do a little bit of a demonstration with Python. Mark's just going to help me out. And um, Python, the reason we're using Python is because it's fairly simplistic to learn. This comic is just, you know, another humorous aspect. So Python is fairly simple to learn. Hello world is just a print hello world. You don't really need to know what dynamic typing and white space are yet. The point is, we're going to try to teach you Python because it's fairly simple to learn. It looks more like... English than say Java. Java looks like it's a bunch of punctuation with English. Python looks more of just like it's awkward English, but it's English. So what I've got here is a shell and a portable Python. And we can do some very simple stuff with Python. Uh, if I want to add numbers, say one plus two, it'll tell me three. If I want numbers like twenty-five plus thirty-eight, but I can't type. And 5 plus 38, that's 163. And a computer is very good at doing math. It's just this sequence of logic gates. It's very fast at using. So I can do 38 to the 6 if you want, a very big number. Uh, two asterisks is the Python notation for an exponent. So if I do 38 to the 6, that's not going to give me the right answer. That's just subtraction. Um, that's pretty much basic arithmetic. I don't want to give me two random numbers, two very big numbers, and see how they can go. Marcus. Okay. Very fun. All right, one million seven hundred and sixty-three thousand five hundred and three. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you, you remembered all that? Go on. Uh, to the fifth. Easy. So, Python computers in general are very fast with their arithmetic. And all at the end, this one is long because it's a long number. Uh, second part is with some variables. Now, a variable is like a container for a value. In math, when you have a variable, you're uh, assigning a number, let's say, to a letter, so x equals 5. You can do the same thing in Python or in any programming language. Really. So if I write x equals 5, and I want to show you x later, I'll write print x, it'll tell me x is 5. This seems pretty useless at first because you can just write 5 out, but if you have something more complicated like this is a really long string and I don't want to type it again, I can just, oh god, I messed up. <laughs> x is, this is a really long string and I don't want to type it again. And I just want to print x. I'll print x. If I want to print x a hundred times, I can do that too. <laughs> right? So, uh, what else can you do with this? Other basic concepts. Um, yes? Can you get rid of viruses? Not yet. <laughs> we'll see. Because that involves working with other people's code, not yeah. necessarily writing your own code. Moving on. Uh, arithmetic, variables. There are some basic control structures in Python that will let you do some decision making. So if you want to say uh, x equals 5, if x 
2 equals is the comparison operator. So if you want to see if something is equal to something else, you wouldn't use 1 equal because that's assignment and that's a variable. 2 equals is comparing two things. So if x equals 5, uh, print, yes, x equals 5. It's fairly easy. And x, in fact, equals 5. If x is not equal to 5, it just not going to print anything. The point is, you have to be very explicit with your instructions when using the computer. You can't just tell the computer, you know, make me a sandwich. Because it's not going to do it. It's going to give you an error. You don't like errors, I don't know. Uh, you, errors are bad. Yeah. So the point is, you have to be very, very explicit with your instructions. So how do you program a robot? You can't just, you know, walk up to our robot talent out there and say, drive forwards. We use Java. Yeah. And uh, Java's Java. hard. Uh, it's, very, it's pretty intuitive though. It's similar to Python that you have a series of letters and numbers and words, and you put them together to write a program to recreate some instructions. So here was part of our Java code from last year. This is just a small segment of several hundred lines of code. This is our chassis class, which means we can drive our robot. This isn't this is everything, but it's part of it. We can drive our robot with this class. So left Jaguar equals new Jaguar, so on and so on. It seems pretty complicated. The point is, it just works. You can understand it pretty easily because they're variables. Like, for example, this area, this was just assigning where our motors are. This is just basically telling the program where you're looking for our motors. Yeah. And then here it's creating a drive constructor, constructor yeah. um, using stuff in the WPI library that we actually use to interface with the robot because we don't use just regular Java. We have a whole custom library that we have to use. So this seems pretty complicated now, I suppose. Um, if you really want to get into programming, if you're really dedicated, we're going to do you doing several more sessions, and we'll learn just by practicing. We have a robot available. We actually have a robot and extra control board available, so there's always a chance to test and for you to actually apply your understanding. Because if you're just doing it, listening now, it's not going to work out. And on that subject, I'm sorry I couldn't get you all computers, but there's like 30-something of you, and that would be a lot more. So, uh, after you write your code, you have to compile it. If you just tell a computer, well, it works here, but you have to convert the programming language into a machine-readable language such as assembly. And this is pretty much converting your words and letters and numbers into random strings of hexadecimal code and all a bunch of that stuff, eventually getting down to binary. Computers well, understand binary. binary. Yeah. So it's ones and zeros. For example, one zero, one zero, one zero, you go to the number 42 in decimal. And finally, you have to run and deploy the code. So after we type in the code, we compile the code into a machine-readable language, we put it into the robot, and we tell it to move or shoot frisbees or climb up and so on. The structure we use for our programming is called command-based programming. There's a very good reason. First, I'll get to that later. But first of all, we have different subsystems of the robot. Our robot, Talon from last year, uh, has to launch frisbees and climb the pyramid and it has to drive around. So we have a drivetrain, we have a dumper for dumping out frisbees, we have a climber for climbing up the pyramid, and we have a camera for the drivers to see. These are all different subsystems. They all do a different thing. And this is just an example. This isn't our robot, this is just an image I found online, but it shows you the different subsystems. On the top left it says there's an elevator with preset stops, so that's one subsystem. On the bottom left there's a minibot scoring mechanism. And then on the top right there's a gripper with a pair of rollers, and on the bottom right there's a camera. They skip the drive trick here, but that's also a very important subsystem. After we have the subsystems, we have to tell it to do it to, to tell it to do something. This is where my program will falls apart. Yes, it does. Uh, we use commands to do that. So we tell the subsystem, we want you to move forward, move backwards, turn left, turn right. We want the dumper to open and close, we want the camera to pan, we want the climber to move up and down. That's a command. These are several of the some dozen commands we had last year. And they're all very descriptive things, you know, camera reset, drive to joystick, drive to goal. They tell you what the subsystem is supposed to do. And finally, after you're done, you know, coding, compiling, running, and deploying, there are two different control modes during the actual competition. This isn't universal, it's just for us. The first control mode is teleoperated, so we have human control, we have a pair of joysticks and a laptop, and people drive the robot, and it connects to the laptop, connects to the robot. This is, you know, people in tele teleoperated mode. There's a laptop there, and they're just driving the robot. Then we have autonomous, in which the robot controls itself. There's no driver control whatsoever. The robot moves on its own. It has sensors to track where it's going and to, look, to see where it's going and so on. That's really it. Um, 
You can really, I would like you guys, especially the development programmers out there, to try this out at home. Go to python.org, just because Python's simpler, and download Python 2.7.5. They'll offer two versions on the website. There's 3.3.2 and 2.7.5. I would recommend 2.7 just because it's, there's more support online. 3.3 is fairly new and it's not the same thing really. So python.org, go to download, you'll see it. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Yeah. Oh, so what I didn't mention to you before is that I'm using something called Portable Python. Uh, you don't need to know what that is. But if I want to, once I download Python, usually it comes with something called Idle. Idle is the integrated development environment. So if I want to open up Idle, which takes a while actually. Aside from Idle, there's also something you can use command prompt. So if you type search and then you go to CMD, usually. You can't, I don't think you can. Well, I don't think it's this. Copyright. And you can do some pretty cool stuff. Uh, Python is not installed on this computer, is it? No, it's not installed on this computer. But if you type in PowerShell on your own Windows, and you type in PowerShell, and then this will come up, and you can just mess around with it. There's really not much you can do to damage your computer unless you type in rm-r, which I don't recommend doing because that'll remove everything. Are you done? Yeah. Well, don't do that. I mean, if you just smash your keyboard, and that'll happen. It doesn't want you to so forget that. Idle open yet? Yes, Idle is open. So I don't know if everybody can see this, but this is pretty much the same thing I had earlier, and just a little bit better. So if I want to print, this is Idle. This is an integrated development environment. That's what Idle is. Python comes with Idle usually. So after you download Python, if you type in Idle in the search box, which I can, of course, because there's no Python on this computer, this should come up, and you can just mess around. Just type in expression, you know, one, you know, two of the. To the hundred. I'll give that number pretty quickly. The point is, you should experiment around on your own. There's not a lot I can teach you that you won't learn on your own. And uh, Python has great support online. Yeah. There are lots of tutorials because it's one of the earliest programming languages people learn. It's it's an easy language to get into, so there's lots of places online that you can find help. Uh, why don't we mess around with the shell some more? So. Do you guys want to do anything with this? this the, I'm only going to show you some simple functions right now. Yeah. No. Sorry. So I can do it? Yeah. In fact, if I. No. Wait, show them a basic loop. Okay, sure. There's something called a while loop. Would that, so be, that might be better if you do it in idle loop. Very well. Does it solve equations in you? Yeah. Well, you, you can have to program it to program solve equations. So I'm initially using a variable, variable x set to 1. I want to print x. It'll give me x equals 1. So I'll put that back there. A while x is less than 100. 100. It's impressive. Print x. Oh, I have an infinite loop. Sorry. Dude, oh. that's an infinite loop. <laughs> I've made a mistake. You've made an infinite loop. Yes, yeah, sorry. Put that back up. Yeah, that's bad. Okay, wait for that to load. What's up? So x equals 1, while x is less than 100. 100? 100. Print x. And also, increment x by 1. So the while loop will go through this every time. It will say, as long as x is less than 100, and right now it's 1, so as long as x is less than 100, I want you to print out the value of x. And then after you print out the value of x, increment the value of x by 1. And then it'll go back to the top, because it's looping. So then, while 2 is less than 100, print x. While 3 is less than 100, until so on and so on, until it gets 99, then it stops. So that displays the numbers from 1 to 99 in this case, because it's less than 100. Anything else? Um, um, I do something similar with like perfect squares. Yeah, sure. Let's see if you don't mind. Yeah. Let's see if I remember this. Alright. Um, Can you guys see this properly? Everyone in the back? Yes? No. Okay, I got something. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, 3x plus 7 equals negative 22. <laughs> Alright, hold on, Marcus, finish up first. <laughs> Is that your math homework, dude? Not cool. If you're gonna try to, you know, if you're gonna try to get through your math homework using programming, you should program it yourself. Didn't you do that into the Python yeah. theorem last year? Oh yeah, and programming is not limited to like Python or Java. Like there is programming in places that you wouldn't even guess. For example, how many of you have a graphing calculator? All of you, right? Well, you can actually program different functions into your graphing calculators, which is why they ask you to clear it before every standardized test. Um, 
For example, Neil, what do you have? You have magnitude, right? What? What What do you have on yours? My program? Yeah. I had something for a math test in which we had to find the sum of a few terms, and we would have to use a formula for an arithmetic sequence. So I put that in my calculator, just put a program in my calculator, and it works. And I've got one that does the Pythagorean theorem both ways, so you never have to do the Pythagorean theorem again. Yeah, I won't forget. We will teach you. We will teach you. So, uh, and, and that's in... But one thing to keep in mind, the language that's on your calculators is much more of a pain to work with than Python. Python's a walk in the park. TI basic makes you want to rip your hair out. Uh, tablets, it depends on your tablet. Um, with Mac OS X or any really Apple tablet, they sort of limit limit the tablet so you can't really compile on it. There are probably oh, a bunch Android. of apps. Android will let you do it. Android will let you, because Android is based on is it Java Linux. 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 Which is C++. But that doesn't matter, because you should do it on your computer or any device you have. Even your graphing calculator will support it. You can program. So is there anything else you guys want to do here? Oh, no. I'm not going to do that for you. Strong manipulation? Oh, yeah. Cool. Um, oh, do they do, like, name guesser? I don't know how to do it. Yeah. You don't? You don't really no, not on shell. Do it in a That's kind of sexy. All right. Wow. Because you, you know what I'm talking about, the name guesser program, right? Wait. You never showed them. You never showed them Hello World. We'll see if I remember. That's for Java. This is important math, though. Oh, it's not working because I'm silly right now and I can't remember. The Import right math and then square root, square root pi. You don't have to. You do have to. Right now that didn't work. But no, if you're not math that pi, it'll show me pi. So that's cool. So there's not much else I can show you today because it's virtually impossible for me to teach you everything in half an hour, half an hour session. We have like 20 minutes. Uh, but if you come, I think Tuesdays and Thursdays is it? Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll eventually notify you via email. Then those devoted programmers will will definitely try to work with you and get this going. Again, you can go to python.org, download Python, try it out yourself at home. And this is pretty much just the basics of programming. So, if you have any questions, you can see me or Marcus after the meeting. Contact me here, or and yeah, actually, please give me feedback because we're going to do these lessons again, and I'd really like to know what you liked, what you didn't like, and what you want to learn more about. Yeah, the majority of the program is. It's going to be done in Java. Yep. Yeah. So if you want to get a head start in Java, you can download the IDE in Java, and that means